to the Goons Podcast. Yay, Goons Podcast. Yay, Goons Podcast. Yes. That's yes. the worst that intro is you've us. gone with. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Right, well, want to introduce our guest we, today? We have before, a guest. Yeah, before we get into it, uh, we, we are guests. joined today by the man, the myth, legend, the modern day guitar legend. I said legend twice. Tim Henson of Polyphia. Clap your hands. Clap your hands Ooh. for Tim Henson of Polyphia. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Mr. Welcome. Tim. Welcome. 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 How are you doing, Mr. Tim? I'm doing okay. Just waking up to join a podcast with you nice people. Yes. I, that's I would be excited for you, but this is the Goons podcast, and I almost kind of feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> they called us nice. No idea what I'm getting into, so we'll no, find you really out. don't. <laughs> it's I mean, you've already hell. started, so <laughs> there's no turning back now. You're already, on, You're the already on the highway with hell, the title. My friend. Yeah, we, we we just can't <laughs> stop from here. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, um, we'll try and keep the shit talk to a minimum. Because we talk Actually, about turns a lot on this podcast. That was my, my first question I wanted to ask him was, Oh, oh no. God. Like, Mr. Tim, do you have any, like, weird, like, shit stories from, like, being on tour? <laughs> That's like, what have you I'm ever starting. been, like, on tour and you just, you know, <laughs> your bowel <laughs> movement happens at a bad time. Has that ever happened to you? I don't know if I've personally had any, and I don't necessarily know if um, my homies want me exposing them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, nobody watches this. I'll, I'll what just, about like fake just, names like, like George? I'll be very, I'll be very vague. Do you guys know what hot bagging is? Hot bagging. Hot bagging? Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Is that like when you shit in a bag and light it on fire? <laughs> Well, no, the bag would already be hot from the shit that's inside of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I got you. So basically, you know, on a tour bus, there's you don't shit uh, in, in the toilet. You know, you can piss yeah. in the toilet. You cannot throw up in the toilet. You can only piss in the toilet. Um, okay. No, no solids, no anything. It's, you know, whoever does that has to clean it, and that's a fucking terrible thing. Ugh. I wouldn't know. Is that just like the hardware of the tour bus sucks, or is that just like an unwritten rule? That's like don't stink up a bus. Yeah, that's like a. I don't think any bus ever is like capable of doing that simply because, like, you know, you you gotta like empty the tank, and if there's like solid shit in there, yeah. you, um, you, you so you it's kind of like being in a camper it. almost. Yeah, yeah same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't shit in the tour bus. So you know, one time we're in Europe, and uh, like it's like. 4 a.m. or something and we're like parked somewhere that isn't uh anywhere near a toilet and um someone in in the crew had to go real bad so they did the classic hot bag <laughs> the and, classic um, hot bag <laughs> <laughs> i just remember i didn't witness it but i remember hearing about it and how weird it is oh, because you know on, you're, you're... when you shit <laughs> I don't know if you guys do this, but do you, when you shit, do you also piss? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Every time. It's like a combo. It's like a two for one. Yeah. Combo. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, imagine like you're just somewhere in Europe and <laughs> fucking like in like a parking lot somewhere. And, you know, it's like windy and cold and fucking <laughs> Dece in December, you know, and um you're just like squatting to take a shit in a bag and you just don't really know what to do with your dick. And like, you know. <laughs> you put your dick in the bag? What happened? Well, see, that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to like figure out the logistics of because, you know, what do you do with your dick in the piss that comes out of your dick? My question is, what do you do with the bag afterwards? <laughs> you just throw it. You, I guess you just take it back onto the bus and, you know, hide it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. That is not what you do. You leave the bag. <laughs> well, Easter egg hunt. Put it under somebody's pillow. The glorious life of a rock star, baby. Yeah. <laughs> in a parking lot in Europe. <laughs> Wait, okay, love that. So, I, I have a question. Yeah. So, okay. Um, who asked me that question? That was I, soup. I wasn't uh, looking. Was soup. My name is oh, Soup. Oh, okay. I... I I just figured because we're in the Do's Discord, I'm unfamiliar where the origin the origin of the do comes from. And as the first question asked to me was about shit, 
Is it a shit reference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody thinks. Um, but my my original YouTube name was Mountain Dew, just because I I was ba- I basically snorted it. I was obsessed with the soda, but I spelled it oh, like Mountain okay. D O O O. So like as I got more subs, I didn't want to like steal a whole ass brand name, so I just dropped Mountain and added the because people just kind of called me Dew. But everybody thinks I'm just basically saying the shit. <laughs> so that's, that's a very awesome. valid question, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um are you any of you guys trailer park boys fans? Oh yes. dude, yes. That's my banner on Twitter actually. It's the, <laughs> Your it's, voice matches that show. <laughs> <laughs> my banner is uh Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles. It's a great that's show. That's lovely. I've uh I've very much been um binging everything. I I finished the uh the whole season, like not that long ago, and then just started watching all the movies, and the movies uh, are good. Pretty much everything in the collection. I've kind of stopped though once I got to the animated series, and then said, you know, let me just start the show over. But you know, all the shitisms are my favorite part of that show. When, <laughs> the shitisms. Like, yeah, like, like he's religion? just all. He's just always talking about shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. this I podcast kind of summed up. Yeah, dude, we the, we have not had a podcast where we've not mentioned shit or shit story. The shit or even the word blowing. shit. Yeah, the shit winds are blowing, man. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, yeah, that is a, that is a fucking amazing show, dude. It, it is like a very self-aware TV show. I, there's like no other way to really describe it. It's like it's yeah. done poorly on purpose, just just for like comedy sake. The like they know thing. the camera crew is there and everything. It's just so scuffed. It's beautiful. Is Apparently, it, those like, dudes like go to bars dressed up in their characters in Halifax <laughs> really? or wherever the fuck they live. Yeah, I've got a bunch of friends from Canada who say like they've just randomly run into them. Um, <laughs> I would know the do. character. <laughs> Imagine just being in a bar and like you know before he passed, obviously, but like running into Mister Leahy. And you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be crazy. Like, that as Mr. Leahy, you know? Imagine, like, the end game actors doing that. Like, Thor just showing up to the bar. <laughs> that actually be pretty sick. The, the weird thing, like, here in L.A., you can just, like, run into, like, Tim or Eric from Tim and Eric. But they're definitely um, not in character when you run into them. They're just, Yeah, like, I figured. Like They're living in like LA, do you people. bump into a shit ton of people? Um, not really, but I mean, more so just at parties. You're just like, yeah. oh, I'm mm. here with these this guy right now. That's yeah, something. Has but, there uh, has there been anyone that you've been like mind blown to meet either like at a party in LA or just like even at your show or something or like find out that a celebrity you like is a fan of Polyphia or anything like that or is it all just kind of just bumping Dude, I was people? At, I was at this Mac DeMarco show and um, do you guys know who Melanie Faye is? Sounds super familiar. Mm. Yeah. She's um guitar she player. She's that girl with the She's a very, the... very good guitar player. Wonderful guitar player. Oh, I was thinking player. of the gap tooth girl with like Melanie Martinez. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who that is, but... Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Melanie Faye was, uh, she was... She was opening for Mac DeMarco and um, like we went to go hang out. And as we like went backstage to the green room, I ran into fucking... Um, Who's the dude from Step Brothers? Not Will Ferrell. Oh, John C. Uh, Riley. Yeah, John C. Riley. Dude, I just run into John C. Riley and I'm drunk as fuck, <laughs> and I'm I just like punished the fuck out of the guy. I just stopped and I looked at him and I was like, dude. I fucking love you. I just told him that. <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked at me and he was like, "Thanks, man." And he like shook my hand and everything, and fucking, I just like went back to the green room, just fucking starstruck. I was like, "Holy shit, that was John C. Riley. He was so nice." Um, but yeah, that's you know, that's a time that I just ran into somebody fucking cool. I, I feel like that's such an odd place to see John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah, at, at yeah, backstage at a Mac DeMarco show. Yeah, I don't like, know. I what? feel like it'd be like seeing him at like maybe an Eagles gig or something. I can't imagine seeing him with like a Mac DeMarco. That's so odd. Huh. 
Was there like, yeah. like I said though, have you found anyone that's uh, that you're a fan of that you found out like listens to Polyphia that you were shocked by or is it all just normal um, fans? Probably like the first time that ever happened, which like probably stuck with me a lot more than it has like recently just because now it's like, I'm not, I don't really, you know, keep up with it as much. But the yeah. first time that that really happened that I was like very starstruck, starstruck um, that they were a fan of me uh, was Black Bear. Um, really? I didn't, mm. I didn't know that like he was a Polyphia fan until like... Um, my friend Lil Aaron, he like uh, writes with him a lot, and yeah. um, they came through Dallas. Like this is like in like 2016 or 2017 when I was like very like, you know, all my friends and shit were just listening to Black Bear like because yeah. you know, and uh, he came through Dallas, and um, one of my photographer friends was like, on tour with him too, and they were like, "Yo, um, are you coming to the show tonight?" And I was like, oh, "I mean, I guess, yeah." And, and they were like, um, yeah, Black Bear wants you to come to the bus. And I was like, really? And then I found out that he like fucks with Polyphia and um, all sorts of things. And then he like texted me saying some shit like, we should start a band. Like, I want to, he was like, I want to, I want to sing for Polyphia, but like, you know, we'll name it something else. And I was like, oh shit. And he was like, let me like do a remix of Goat. And I was like, oh shit. And then he just n never did that. <laughs> and for like, <laughs> to like that been sick, what a tease. Though, yeah. then we started working on this one song and then nothing ever happened. And I just kind of figured like, oh, like when you're, when you're that famous, like you just do whatever, like, and just, yeah, you know, don't mm -hmm. whatever. And then finally fucking, um, you know, just last year, I guess maybe six months ago over the summer, um, we, you know, we finally put out a song. So Thank God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're like as famous as him, I feel like you just take on so many projects that you probably just overwhelm yeah. yourself with and then just give all your attention to one and forget about one. Like, I feel like you just get mm -hmm. completely lost in the sauce when you're Dude, that absolutely. big. Absolutely. Like, it's like every day, like, you know, especially if you're doing like two a days or three a days for sessions, like you could just be in with fucking like, you know, huge stars and like, you know, he writes for a lot of people too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you could just, just crazy amounts of shit that you could just be doing, you know. That's so sick though that he's a fan. I feel, yeah, I, I always kind of got the vibe that he was like into a ton of different music because even listening to his music, you hear so much like inspiration from so many random genres. So, I could definitely, yeah. I could definitely see him. Uh, he's very talented for sure. What genre mm -hmm. do you guys, do you consider like Polyphia? I was actually going to ask that question because I was I was listening to Pliff the other day and I was trying to think to myself like how do I categorize this because it's almost yeah. like rapping on a guitar like, uh, what, like what are you really like? <laughs> um, I I wouldn't call it math rock because everything is in four four um, or three mm -hmm. four like depending on the yeah. song but like just mostly four four and we never change it um, it doesn't deviate unless like mm. we just like beat switch into something else but um, yeah. So that's I wouldn't call it math rock. I, I I think that genres are normally defined by the drums, right? Like rock music, rap music, like dance music, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the the this type of beat like sets the style, right? Um, right. So if if we were gonna go by that, like our our newer things are are just trap drums, right? So yeah the drums would be trap the guitars would be like i guess a hybrid of of like it's all like a lot there's just a lot of different kind of techniques it's, so it's like hybrid there, rock i guess that'd be a good, good way to describe it right there's like rock there's like prog mm -hmm. in there there's like oh, yeah. you know a little bits of like gen there's like a little bit of like math rock just in the tones you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i mean like i w as an instrumental band we try and fill the void of vocals where the with the guitars obviously so yeah. you know a lot of the melodies are similar to what vocals would do um in certain songs etc but um yeah, I don't know. I, I never really answer for that. And I kind of just, you know, whenever somebody asks me that, I'm normally with somebody else and then I let somebody else 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's that's a good thing though. Like when your when your style of music can't be defined by a title or like a you know like a like a thing. One genre. That's like a good yeah, thing. Super. I mean, yeah. you like invented something of your own and mm-hmm. like. It's like your own thing, you know? Like, whenever I hear somebody try and play, like, that kind of music, I just instantly think of Polyphia. Because it's just, yeah. Yeah. you guys have, like, kind of invented that own, you know. Yeah, I feel like you guys and thing. Tron. <laughs> Can't even describe it because it doesn't have a word. Yeah. You guys and Tron? No, like Tron. Movie, Tron. Oh. <laughs> Tron, <laughs> like, they, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, you got definitely different styles. But uh, I feel like, I don't know, those are two bands that I'd kind of put in their own, their own, like, weird genres of just a bunch of different things going on that works super well together by the way yeah. i wanted to ask i don't know how much of it you're comfortable talking about but how's uh how's the new album coming along it's it's coming along um currently at this stage on march 3rd 2021 um we're almost done with the instrumental portion of it um Scott has just a little bit more guitars to do um, on his end. And then we're pretty much done with the instrumental portion of it. And then on the not instrumental instrumental portion of it, we're just waiting on a few features. Um, and that's kind of what's holding it up really is, yeah. is the features mm-hmm. because um, yeah, you just, Never know. Wait on other people. Yeah, just pretty much waiting on other people. And and, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, that like our fans are just waiting this long, but it'll be worth it, I hope. Oh, for sure. So, (laughs) what's the writing process like? Do you like normally start out with a riff or like a drum beat, or is it all just kind of random and how everything goes? Like, um, it it really depends. Um, like, cause I, I, I can write to anything. Um, so can Scott. Uh, we we can start from scratch, which happens. We can then, you know, most of the time, like a, not most of the time, but a, a fairly common way would be starting with a chord progression and then adding a top line and then creating like the main riff that like is what's the song is going to be based around. And then I'll make a beat. Scott will make, I'll send it to Scott. He'll do like a different beat and then we'll like kind of Frankenstein the beats together of like the coolest parts that we like. Um, and then try and build a song out of it from there. And they all kind of follow the same structure of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Um, and, uh, then we send it to the clays. Um, other times, you know, for example, like with the non, instrumental parts of this record that we're working on with all the rappers and and singers and stuff um they'll send like sometimes you know when i'm playing music for rappers uh i say music and not beats because they're there's they're more than just beats um when i'm playing music for rappers they just don't really know what to do because there's a lot of (laughs) stuff happening it's more than just uh, like drums. Yeah. 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 So, you know, oftentimes for at least a couple times on this record, I, you know, we found ourselves in a pickle in that situation where the rapper just kind of doesn't know what to do. And so I'll say, how about this? Do you have any songs just laying around that you don't plan on using? And they're always like, yeah, I've got like 400. So we just sit there and oh, we just sit there and listen to like their songs and they just let me pick one. And it's really cool because I just get to listen to like all these rappers like on release music and shit. And um, that's actually pretty sick. Like just, who? Can you name a rapper who's who you've got to do that with? I'm not going to name names until the record comes okay, out, yeah. unfortunately. That's just, fair. That's oh, yeah. fair. Um, yeah. But uh, I, mean, I was asking like if there was one in the past. I didn't know if you had done any in the past and not just on this upcoming one. Yeah, um, that's fine. No, yeah, yeah. This is all fairly like new stuff. So like um just the the anticipation of, of the record itself. I'm, right, like, yeah. I got you. Be a little mm-hmm. more secretive than normal. But yeah. um, you know, to like just sit there and listen to unreleased stuff and then pick one like that pretty much I can have and turn it into <laughs> whatever it is that I want. So, you know in in these scenarios like i'll pick one and then they'll send me the song and the stems and pretty much the only thing that i want is the acapella and because i'm just going to completely fuck the song up like it's just by the time by the time we're done with it it's going to be a different song 
Yeah. Um, but the cool just thing like is with the same like vocals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. the vocals are, will be exactly the same other than like things that we might tweak, you know, just to like match the new song. But yeah. um, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it, it definitely has always, you know, whenever we get a song like that and just like pretty much get to rebuild it from the ground up around the acapella. Um, it's it always is a fun time for us and it, it's always just a cooler thing by the time we're done with it so that's a yeah. way that we do it and i and you know we can do that with any piece of a song so like a, any like instrument so like let's say you know we were like working with not a vocalist um and like i could just if somebody just sent me a drum track or something like i could just build a whole song around just the drum track or anything like that so you know there's lots of different ways that we do right but um at the end of the day yeah. it comes out a fucking song like yeah. yes yeah yeah that's the idea is that it, it does sound like music when we're done with it <laughs> is there like an easier like is there a process that's easier than other processes like starting with guitar or starting with drums um the easiest things are when it just sounds like the song already. Um, oh. Which, you know, like what I mean by that is, have you guys ever played um, with like synths before? Like real yeah. synths? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Every time I do a session where there's like <clears throat> synths involved, I, I don't personally own any. Um, I should say that. I should clarify that. I really want some. Um, but every time, like I, I, you, you know, you could just play a chord progression on those synths, like those, like real synths, and they just already sound like whatever the fuck song. Like you don't need yeah. to tweak; it. they just sound <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, like the analog synths. They like, the, you know, there's already like you know, like automation and shit on. Like if you just hold a chord, it it's there's movement. It's not static. You know what I mean? So it's like, not just like one like th- like a just a plain note. Yeah, there's like more you, to it. It's, yeah, there's a lot more to it. So you just play a chord progression and like it. That's the loop, right? And then it just already sounds like the song. So mm-hmm. that's kind yeah. of what I what I mean by it's easiest when it already sounds like the song. By like yeah, oh, makes sense. If you just like sing a melody and you're like, oh, that's the fucking song right there. It's easy, you know, because I know what's mm-hmm. going to. I can. I know what we're gonna do now. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I mean by when it already sounds like it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, other than that, it's 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 music. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's necessarily like an easy way to, to do it. But I have a question that uh, kind of segues off of um, of your like the, the whole genre thing. What would you say is probably like your your biggest like guitar influences? That makes uh, you wanna, like start for guitar um definitely Jimi hendrix was like you know yeah nice, like nice, the nice. the starting point for me um i kind of got into black sabbath like right before hendrix and i really liked Hell, tony yeah. iommi because like you know you sit there and learn like the, the whole the fucking king paranoid record and and uh like all, all of that and just like sitting there by listening to it by ear and you're like, okay, this all makes sense. It's done and it like it's just all pentatonic, you know? Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. and then like shortly after that, my dad introduced me to Hendrix. And then I was like, Oh, this is fucking sick, you know, because he he yeah. was like one of the first people to really popularize the blend between lead and rhythm playing. Um, yeah, and also definitely. just like he's just the goat, you know. So definitely Hendrix. <laughs> he said it. He said it. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> I'm shaking. So, so definitely Hendrix was like kind of the what got me really started on wanting to kind of be like you know I I regarded Hendrix when I was in fifth grade as the best guitar player to ever live. And then I learned, oh, wait, there's like a lots of uh, other people who like are very, very, very much better. But like they're definitely not as <laughs> iconic, but they're, they are better at guitar. So then yeah, from definitely. there, like I kind of, you know, my dad showed me like Steve Vai and, and Paul Gilbert. And, yes. you know, oh, yeah. Like yes. the, uh, the OGs. And um, I remember like there was this DVD that he had of Paul Gilbert and it was like one of the... Uh, the like you know 
play fast. Let me show you how to play fast ones or something. Oh, I think I've seen like bits and parts of that on YouTube yeah, before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll get like randomly recommended like a yep, five same. million <laughs> view video of Paul Gilbert. And he's like, he's got these long ass pinkies. I'm like, dude, Paul Gilbert, I didn't know how a long pinky I can't do that. Yeah. So, you know, then I got into that and then, um, I kind of like straight away from like the virtuoso like guitar playing a little bit once I was in middle school just because I really got into like heavier shit. Um, in middle school, I really loved Job for a Cowboy and Whitechapel. So then I started just playing like Fuck yeah, dude. heavy shit. Whitechapel's like my fucking go to when I was younger. Yeah. I used to wear a Whitechapel shirt to school and I got called a. An F word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, a couple of football player dudes. Yeah, I think we all relate to that to yeah. an extent. Yeah. It probably wasn't for the shirt, McNabb. Yeah. <laughs> but then shortly, like, you Fuck know, you. around that time in high school when I was like at the peak of my like uh really liking heavy music, I, I kind of was like, you know, at the time we had just started Polyphia. At the at the time the, the name was Palisades. Um and then the band Palisade stole our name. Wait, say that again? So in 10th grade, me and Scott and our original drummer, Brandon, had started Polyphia, right? Uh-huh. But at the time, it wasn't called Polyphia. It was called Palisades. The band was. Yeah. Palisades. Palisades or Palisades? Palisades. <laughs> I, I, there's Palisades. another band called Palisades. <laughs> right. So that band Palisades, really? like, um, like, they were called Marilyn is Dead. That was their name. Ew. Oh, yeah, God. terrible. And then, um, <laughs> and then shortly, like, we both played this, like, shitty local festival one time. And then, like, a week later, they changed their name to Palisades. And they were, like, way bigger than us at the time. They had, like, management. They were, like, signed to Rise. Like, it was a whole thing. And we were like, okay, yeah. well, we're just a fucking dumbass local band. Fuck us, right? I guess we'll change our fucking name. <laughs> so <laughs> we did. Um, and then, you know, at that time, Brandon was our old drummer. Was like, I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna go to Berkeley. And so then I was like, Well, fuck. Like, if you're gonna go to Berkeley, I, <laughs> I should try to go to Berkeley. So when you learn about Berkeley, like, you know, you either audition with John Mayer or Jazz or Guthrie. So I chose Guthrie, and I really got into Guthrie. Um, mm. And that was kind of like the reawakening of like, you know, playing like really heavy shit in back into like virtuoso music um mm -hmm. yeah because originally like polyphia was kind of like a deathcore death metal band yeah you guys were genty like your first stuff yeah. that's even on spotify is like there's some super genty like breakdowns and stuff mm -hmm. so that was in college um but before that like in high school it was like less gen and just straight death metal because pretty much it was just yeah. blast beats the entire time um blast beats and double <laughs> bass yeah. is, God. At two <laughs> is that music live or is that can you not hear that anymore um you could probably like you could probably find it on youtube um but i'm not gonna tell you and <laughs> or anyone listening <laughs> <laughs> i'm not just you know i'd like to just let yeah. that live in the past but yeah, um, just let it die <laughs> understandable I just find that shit like funny. It's just like it. Like yeah, that's like that. Uh, blast beats. That's like that old Post Malone video of him playing and asking Alexandria cover on bass. Like that's same energy. Yeah, very much <laughs> the same energy. But um, so yeah, you know Guthrie Govin is uh going back to the question that was asked. <laughs> Guthrie Govin was kind of like very, very important to me at, in my mm -hmm. guitar playing journey. Um, like. From transition. So you actually played with Guthrie Govan or was it just like a no, no 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 no. Like I was just a fucking, oh. you know, kid in high school who discovered Guthrie yeah. Govan and I was like, I well, I did, oh. I didn't know you could fucking play like that. You know, like that, right. yeah. it, I like, think that's everybody's reaction, yeah, to seeing him play for the first time. It's like wild, how yeah. dude. Yeah, and it very you know, like and of course like I I would like take the bus to school and, and just religiously listen to like, you know, boot. Born of Osiris and Veil of Maya and Periphery and Animals as yeah. Leaders. And, um, you know, those were like my favorite bands. And I, I remember mm -hmm. like as like, you know, high school started ending and, you know, um, I did try out for Berkeley. I didn't get in. Um, they, they did not accept me. And around this time where it's just like, okay, I couldn't get into music school. What the fuck am I going to do? Am I going to go to college or what? 
And so I'm just like every day at school, I'm just like looking up interviews from Guthrie and, and Tosin and Misha and, you know, all the the <laughs> bands and musicians that I look up to yeah. to see like what they did and how they got started and like how they like do music for a living because I was like, fuck, if I can't go to music school, like how am I going to do music? Um, but uh, yeah, you know, so I was very much into that. And then, you know, when you listen to like the, the earlier things on Spotify, like from the Inspire EP um, that sounds like Gent and shit, like, you know, you can tell that what we yeah. were listening to, we were very much listening yeah. to <laughs> Periphery <laughs> 2 with Guthrie Govan on the Periphery 2 record um, and uh, all of that. So that, you know, that, that was the, the early influences for guitar and, and all that. Which is cool now because is I'm right? like friends with like most of those people outside of Guthrie, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's still so sick though. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I was gonna say, was there a point in like Palafia where you guys were like, oh yeah, like we were we're good, or was it always just like a slow progression, or was it just like an overnight, like yeah, we're the fucking best band? Um, in in tenth grade, <laughs> uh, you know, when you're 16 years old and we were playing the fastest we've ever played when we were 16. That's like what we were yeah. doing with the blast beats at 240 BPM. <laughs> um, oh, shit. <laughs> Just flexing. Yes. Yeah, so, when you're that young, like the faster, the better. To exactly. Yeah, there's no, exactly. there's no rhythm to it. It's just shred. Uh, yeah. So when you're that young, like, and, and we're all playing that fast and, and like probably the cleanest we've ever played too. It was very much about skill and technique and not very much about the music. Um, yeah. you know, we really thought we were really great. Uh, um, and so like, you know, since the beginning, it, it was always kind of like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make it, we're going to sit there and just do this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, and eventually over time, it, it just, you know, like became less about how fast we can play and more about like how cool we can make music, which, so the yeah. songwriting reigns supreme to like the skill, I would imagine. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. and at the end of the day, you know, music is. Uh, <laughs> well, I just mean like it's more important to write a, a good song instead of like, oh, I can you know play a million miles per hour. Absolutely. Yeah, like, 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 and, and I say this all the time, but you know, guitar is an instrument, and an instrument is used to create music. So music is the end, and the guitar is the means, right? So like, right. Yeah, you know, and I feel like just a lot of people forget that, and and uh, you know, I I've been guilty of that for sure. You know, if you listen to like a lot of our early stuff and even things that aren't so early, but like you know, you can see like, oh, well, this doesn't sound as musical as like this does. But you know, that's that's kind of the thing is to you know just always try and make music yeah. versus like just a jerk off contest. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you think yeah. about it, like listening to your stuff now, you know, you, you can hum that in your head. You know, listening to like old stuff. If you try and like, you can't hum Whitechapel. Yeah, you know, it's not <laughs> something true. that gets stuck in your head. <laughs> I mean, what did he say in possession? He's like, eyes are glowing red with a blah blah blah, blah or whatever the fuck. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you you couldn't hum that. <laughs> you just, you're just sitting in your room, just screaming in your head. <laughs> Dude, I used to scream in the shower. Like, you know how people sing in the shower? I used to like scream in the yeah. shower and i would like go over to my grandma's house to like i imagine Dude, alex terrible just like yeah, just growling in the shower in the shower too but it was for different reasons <laughs> <laughs> i used to go over to my grandma's house to like mow lawns and shit <laughs> dig holes for whatever reason um and uh, i would like you know after like working all day for my grandma i would uh, take a shower and i'd like scream in the shower like someone would sing in the shower and my grandma, I remember telling my dad at one point, <laughs> y y Timmy's screaming in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> your poor some, grandma, man. What the fuck? Like, wrong 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 She's like, my white grandma is like Southern Baptist, you know? Somebody saying in the shower. So, and, and being a white chapel fan at the time, they're like very, you know, anti-Christ. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Was she hard hard hard. Hard. Yeah. Dude, yeah. if you put distortion on a guitar, it's devil music. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my southern Southern Baptist grandmother um, was very concerned, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> is, so uh, I got a question for you. What What did you do before you became Mister Guitar Man? 
Like, did you, you have holes. any inch? So, oh, yeah, you dug holes with lawn Is that actually was it, was that your job digging holes? Um, like the movie holes. Dude, it was you know this is very similar when I was like the the my grandma she's she lived through like the Great Depression because she's old you know and um, yeah. <laughs> that that works, yeah. fair enough checks and, out. Uh, she always told me you know like. Um, make sure to study hard and you won't have to do this. And what we would do is like, uh, she has study music. She has like <laughs> one house and then another, they're like, you know, kind of borderline like shacks that you could probably like buy for just like 10 grand straight up, you know? Um, but <laughs> like, there's this one lot that she has that's just, there's nothing on it. And I don't know why she keeps it because the property value is like not good. And it's in a, in, in a part of town that like, they just don't pay taxes there. Um, that's specifically why she lives there is because there's no taxes and it looks like, yeah, I'm going to move there. It's, it's like very trailer park vibes. Um, and so I would go spend summers with my grandma and she would just have me like dig holes. I don't know why. I, I really, to this day, don't know why. I Treasure? Was, I don't know. I was Just burying digging people, holes, bro. but like pulling weeds, digging holes, mowing lawns. Like that's what I did. And she always said, you know, make sure to study hard because you won't have to work like this. And it's fucking Fort Worth, like Texas in the summer. So it's like 110 oh. degrees out and Oof. it's really shot. But um, no, before like, you know, Polyphia really took off as like, you know, a touring act and everything. Um in high school obviously like we started but like you know we like we're working fucking stupid jobs to like pay for things like i used to work at gnc Mm -hmm. and i remember like one of my first fuck that's not good not a fun place (laughs) but that's like the health mm -hmm. place isn't it like the protein powders and stuff Um, Mm -hmm. yeah yeah trying to convince people to like buy like supplements so they can work out better as like a fucking you know a hundred pound 16 year old (laughs) (laughs) like it's not it i mean it was terrible but anyway so i used like one of my first paychecks from from that place to like buy our first batch of merch that we ever fucking got it was like 400 bucks and i used my whole paycheck to like buy our first batch of t-shirts and um nice you know that said it's funny that that like started like what is now like a very lucrative like merch business um but uh from then like from gnc like i i started uh like in, i started doing like graphic design in high school and to kind of like fun things in the band like i would just go get jobs that would kind of teach me skills that would be important yeah. to the band so I got this job. Rather than just like McDonald's yeah, or something. Yeah. So yeah. I got this job mm-hmm. at this place called Big Frog, which is like a custom t-shirt printing place um, where basically mm-hmm. like you sit there and <laughs> soccer moms come in and tell you like um, the team's name and you have to design their fucking jersey or oh, whatever. Hell yeah. And, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Sounds like so much yeah, fun. Yeah, basically like it was you just sit there and like Photoshop shit for people on the spot um, and they just want stupid, terrible terrible ideas i remember one guy <laughs> I can imagine one guy's like you know like volleyball league that they like i don't know what like normal people do for fun but it sounds like they do terrible team sports um <laughs> like but he he named the team after like the movie sharknado um oh my god so, like, oh, yeah. I, what the you know fuck? i'm sitting there like photoshopping a shark into a tornado and like make it like you know <laughs> Just doing stupid shit like that. But it was a good exercise to learn how to make shit fast and like to, you know, like just get better at graphic design. And and I eventually like, you know, started like getting kind of decent at graphic design. And I was like making all of our merch at the time and also using that place to print the merch. So like, um, yeah. Oh, nice. 200 IQ. It was, it was very much like a, how do I start the business of being in a band um, while also like before being yeah, in the band. Before, I mean, well, while being in the band, but before, like before, before touring with the band. Yeah, I should yeah. Say. And then so from there, um, I wanted to get like really good at graphic design, so I took on an internship at this place called Signazon, which is um basically uh, e-commerce but for signs. So like whenever you drive down the street in whatever city you live huh. in, and if you go to like the Arts District or the Downtown District, and there's like signs like that's like. 
you know, little banners on the like light poles that kind of advertise the museum yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Um, I was mm-hmm. making shit like that. Um, and mm. but the cool thing was is that this place had like a, an entire creative department, and the the designers there were very, very, very good. Um, and uh, like they taught me so many things, and I learned just I learned so much. And I al- I always remember telling them like, yeah, you know, like one day like I want to like own my own company and like you know do all this like entrepreneurial shit but you know mix it with music and they're just like these like i'm like 19 at the time and they're like these 27 28 year old dudes like who are just like well you better stop fucking working here you know like (laughs) this very like um fuck my life kind of vibes coming from them and it was very discouraging as as a 19 year old to like be around that kind of energy and so I wasn't there for very long. I did like end up getting hired from the internship, which was like, you know, as a 19 year old, I think my salary was like 33,000 a year. And I only stayed for like two months. Mm. But like as a 19 year old, I was like, fuck yeah, I made it. Like, you know, I got, yeah. I got a salary. Yeah. But like, you know, shortly, shortly during that time, like it, we were gearing up to like, you know, do our first album, which we we crowdfunded that album. And I remember telling my dad, and this whole time, like my parents think that I'm in school because I just told them that I was going to school. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when in actuality, like I was, you know, I would like get up at 8 a.m. just to get the fuck out of the house. So my mom would think I was in the, in school. Um, I would just like go to Starbucks. <laughs> Damn, you're, you were dedicated to that then. Yeah. I would just like go to Starbucks and like, you know, try and promote our music with their Wi-Fi, like to like get on Twitter and just like message fucking like, hey, what do you think of you're this? Just, like, like dropping random people yeah. to come into fucking Starbucks with their songs. <laughs> um, hey, check me out. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, so like I, I, I did that job and then we we did the uh, Indiegogo and that was like very successful um, to the point where we could fund our whole album. And then that was kind of when I told my dad, I was like, hey, like, I'm not in school. I lied. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're like, it was like, even before that, we did the Indiegogo. It was like when we decided we were going to do the Indiegogo, I told my dad, I was like, I'm not in school um, and we're about to ask the internet for $20,000. And he was like, <laughs> "Now what the yeah, fuck did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah, he did he bust? Did he, he bust out fu- laughing? No, he got kill you? Like, what pissed. Did he-, he was like really fucking upset because my <laughs> older brother like had just dropped out of school too and was not like kind of didn't really have a plan or anything. So he was really fucking pissed because he did like this, you know." I don't know. He was he was very upset about it. But anyways, like it, it, it yeah. ended up going very well. In which case, once that was done, then my dad kind of started being a supporter. Um, he he started to believe in it. And then you know, I didn't tell my mom for another couple of years. <laughs> she she really thought I was in school for like three years. Um, <laughs> Seven oh, years damn. down the road, you're like, yeah, mom, I'm becoming a and doctor. This whole, time, like, <laughs> this whole time, I'm like doing tours, like little mini tours here and there. Like, because, you know, when I actually was in school for like that first semester right after um, high school, like I, I did go on tour for the first time and I did do it like right before finals week and like went and took my finals early. Um, and like my parents knew about it and my, you know, my professors knew like that's they let me come in and take my finals early and shit so I could like go on tour. Um, so like, you know, I would go do these like little mini tours and my parents just thought like I had sorted it out with my professors, you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, it was like all, all a pretty elaborate lie. <laughs> um, but you know, it was all worth it because here we are today. And that's what I did was basically like graphic design before being a guitar man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so did you, so you didn't do any school for the graphic design stuff? You just no. like taught yeah. yourself along the yeah, way very or? very very much just like watching youtube tutorials you can learn right. it yeah that's that's how we all did it i'm pretty sure yeah. as well yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> dude you can yeah. learn so much from youtube i oh, mean yeah. honestly the the way i learned how to play guitar was from watching youtube videos i never went and took lessons or anything like yeah, that too. now granted i'm nowhere near like you or do but yeah. I, I mean i still taught myself how to do basic shit 
at least play you know, the instrument and be familiar with right, it. Right, yeah. like I'm, you know, proficient in playing the guitar just from watching like concert videos or like a little tutorial here mm-hmm. and there. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's so a you lot can, of dude, shit you, on YouTube. You can teach your dude, you could learn more off of YouTube than you could at fucking school. I can Dude, convinced. absolutely, bro. I've actually learned yeah. from the do before, which is weird. He taught me yeah, how to play. What, do? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's a shitty so I've, guitar I've teacher. Learned, I've learned from you before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Fuck, dude. I've learned a lot of things from <laughs> dude, but guitar isn't one of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's I, 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 I have a question. <laughs> do you, do I you, a question all, right, all right, I'll let you go first, then, McNasty. I don't know. I don't know if you can talk about this or not, but what what was the process like making a guitar for Ibanez or making a guitar with Ibanez? Because to me, that's like one of the coolest things of being a guitarist is being able to have like your own signature. That's definitely a milestone for sure. Um, and one of my dreams to do, I, I remember in fifth grade, you know, when I had just started playing, I, I would like sit there and just draw guitars um, that I eventually, mm-hmm. like I wanted a signature guitar because I would always like look at the musicians, friend magazines and see like sinister gates is like iconic as fuck Schecter. Yeah. It's. I think it's really cool if you're in middle school. It's super yeah. cool. <laughs> true, yeah. um, and that's you know, like I wanted that guitar more than anything. So like I would just sit there and draw guitars, like and be like, one day I'm gonna be in the the musicians friend magazine and, and get my own guitar. Which I don't know if they still yeah. make those magazines, but I can imagine if they did that my guitar would be in them. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but um, yeah, no, it was a really cool experience. Uh, as you can imagine, it, it there wasn't that hands-on for the THBB-10, considering it is literally just an AZ with yeah. a different yeah. colorway. So, that was kind of um, what they told us, because the four of us were getting signatures. Um, me, Scott, Mario, and Eric from Chon. Yeah. Um, they were all going to come out at the same time. And it was pretty much just like, you know, oh, what are you going to do? Wait do I want to do that? And like, kind of just like, <laughs> it's like you know, copying little, your friend's like, homework a yeah, little bit, a little but bit. changing it yeah. just enough. Yes. Very much those vibes, you know? Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they, the stipulations that we had were like that they want to keep it roasted maple neck, which, you know, we didn't want to change anyways. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, the AZ shape, which we didn't want to change anyways, because yeah. the AZ fucks. So you were, you were cool um, with the AZ and want like an RG or something. Yeah, I mean, because, like, basically, the year before, they had just unveiled the AZ. Like, um, mm-hmm. the pink the pink AZ that I have is one of the original six that were made. Um, and we were kind of, like, us and Chon were kind of the rollout for the AZ model. And so, a year later, because it did so well, they were like, let's do sig- signatures. Yeah. Um, of it's, the AZ. Scott's is an AZ, too, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, basically it was like roasted maple neck, AZ shape, do whatever you want. And, um, you know, I went through like a bunch of different versions, like, and my friend, um, Y2K at the time wanted me to get him a guitar and the guitar that he chose was Ivan as his version of like the Gibson ES or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys know which one I'm talking about, but. Uh, it's it's essentially like an Ibanez Black Beauty, um, that looks like a it's like an Ibanez that looks like a Gibson. And it's oh got like yeah, it looks the, like, like a like a bluesy guitar. Yeah, yeah. And so he got that guitar, um, and uh, I was just like, you know, I go over there for sessions all the time. So like I'm like playing it and I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, dude, this thing is fucking gorgeous. And I was like, wait a second, what if I scrapped everything that I've been working on for my signature and just did this? But in, mm, in, is that what you went with, like, AZ? the block fret markers? Yeah. So yeah. the block inlays and the all gold hardware and the, you know, the black yeah. guitar mm-hmm. with the black uh, faceplate with the white trim on it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, once we landed on that, we were like, yeah, that looks fucking sick. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, that's how that guitar came about was because of it was inspired by, like, the, the black beauty. Um, kind of guitar with the with the block inlays and everything. So do you uh, do you have any like uh like collectors guitars? Do you have anything that's just like um, something you have you don't ever like play? I don't have anything like crazy like Herman does. Um, like oh, whatever I go over to shit. his oh, house, man. 
he like shows me like he lets me play all of his fucking crazy whatever the fuck guitars <laughs> that they're so wide and man that's it's basically like, um, a warehouse of ibanez guitars no for real yeah he's got he's got like 20 years worth of like you know things <laughs> Yeah. Which, you know, like from hanging out with Herman, I, I realized I need to start asking for a lot more guitars. So that's exactly what I did. I, I just recently got um, a few of the J Customs because I've always wanted the, the J Customs, so nice. but could never afford them, you know, like, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, now that I'm me, I just said, uh, give, me a, <laughs> give me a lot of those. Um, so they gave me a lot of those. Um, so like... <laughs> I really like those. And then I, I just, you know, pretty much what Herman kind of told me was, you need to ask for the expensive ones. And I was yeah. like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, like I've just kind of been collecting a lot of the expensive ones. But none of the cool, like crazy collector, like Steve Vai 10th anniversary, Silver Surfer, fucking whatever, you know, like I don't have any yeah. of those, but. Um, I do. <laughs> I have eventually a, uh... I will. <laughs> I have a. I don't know if you know the uh, the universe guitars that Steve I made. Uh huh. Yeah. The swirly yeah, ones. Sick as fuck. Yeah. And did yeah, they have like have a cloud inlay? The wait, what? Did they have like the cloud inlay or whatever? No, no. I have the the universe. It's like the swirly rainbowy one. Mm hmm. Uh, it's. I think it's like the twentieth anniversary. But I actually managed to nab the one out of a hundred that they made. Ah, oh, dude, yeah, that's it is my fun. it is my pride and joy. I look at it every day. And I jerk there off. There you go, it. man. Oh. <laughs> okay, you could have left the last part open. Yeah, yeah it was. Cool. <laughs> but no, yeah, I. Uh, that's why I was curious if you had like any like collectors' guitars because I, I'm a little bit of a collector yeah, we, myself. Yeah, we shit on McNasty all the time. He he, does, they do all I, the time. Yeah, just so many Ibanez guitars. <laughs> like I get. I just you got know. an Ibanez yesterday, and I have one coming today. Yeah, well, he, <laughs> he buys a new guitar. He'll be like, it'll be like a week. He'll be like, yeah, I just got a new guitar. Like it's just hard to keep up with because he just yeah. buys guitars all the fucking time. <laughs> and meanwhile, Do is over here playing a fucking squire. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I played that shit until I had like 1.5 million subs, dude. And the thing is, it was, what's funny is, Do is like fucking arguably the biggest guitar like YouTuber. Yeah. He's over here playing a fucking squire. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 bought a squire a day for like every <laughs> just because why not? That's, dude, that's all I ever knew, man. Like that. That's what my parents got the me for Christmas. Is fuck. Yeah, I, there was nothing really wrong. That was with my it. first guitar. Was a squire. Yeah, it's just cheap. I mean, the way it plays, there's nothing. Why don't really you still wrong. play it? Well, because the Ibanez <laughs> sound pretty nice. They they don't they don't cut me a check, bro. Fucking. <laughs> Squire ain't, Squire not cutting the checks, bro. Like, <laughs> um, dude, you play, uh, you play like a Majesty now, though, right? Yeah, I have a, I have a, a Sterling, so it's, it's not like the full on super nice um, music man. And the question but... is, fucking why? Yeah, six months. Okay, okay, okay. So I went from a Squire to that. So that was, that was a pretty decent first upgrade, I think. He's a masochist, bro. He's a fucking masochist. What's your favorite guitar now, dude? The definitely the Ibanez RG. Ibanez! Yeah, 100%. <laughs> We're Ibanez fuckboys here. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Well, I like ESP. I like PRS. Manny gang. Get that fucking sacrilegious bullshit out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No shade to ESP. Literally everybody um, here is like into Ibanez except for Sue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Ibanez. I just, I, ESP is what I've always well, known. Well, I mean, your style of music is like, you know, heavy riffs and stuff. That's not usually like an Ibanez thing. That's, you know, ESP's, ESP, like, that's fucking Metallica, of course. What's that? I like Gibson as well, though. Have y'all been to Nam? No, I've no, wanted to go. I've no, wanted I wanted to, to go though. Whenever it happens again, if it ever happens again, um, y'all definitely gonna go check out the ESP booth because they they have their um. There's just like a whole. It's not even a booth. It's a room. They do like on the third floor where it's just a whole fucking room. But they have this one oh section God. of the room that is the the Japanese custom ESPs. And those are the ones where they do like the craziest fuck. Like, they have this one like angel wing guitar that is just a. Like, oh yeah, they do a lot of weird like custom things like that that are like hand carved and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have yeah. one that's shaped like a pizza slice on their website. It's literally <laughs> oh, like a green fucking fretboard, and it says pizza in the fret inlays, and it's just like how much is it? Like fifty grand? No, I think I think it's like. Seven thousand dollars. I can look it up. I'll what look a, it up though. But what a bargain it for is, pizza slice. 
It is hilarious. Tim, have you played any uh, guitars like that are? Could you brought up Nam? Um, have you played any like newer brand guitars that you liked? Like I recently got an Aristides guitar. Those are pretty sweet. I like but, Aristides. They're cool. Yeah. Um, they they play very very well. I don't yeah, know. Very resonant about the yeah. Well, that's the thing. They're made of out of Arium, which is just an, a very yeah. interesting thing and it sounds like a minecraft ore or something like say, it's such a weird yeah. name <laughs> aren't they don't they like almost feel like rubbery like they have like a grippy texture to them dude it feels like a toy really like when you hold them like it feels like it, you just it just feel like you're playing a fully plastic guitar it's weird. how how does the the resonance <laughs> like because resonance is, a, is normally a wonderful thing right yeah. when i remember being on tour with intervals and aaron had um his Aristides, and he was kind of telling me sometimes it's too much resonance. Like he can't yeah, get, like, like he can't control it. You know. Yeah, when you play it acoustically, because it has that like open back, mm-hmm. like on the like the backside. When you play it acoustically, it's very like loud. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, if you just that is very yeah. sick. When a guitar is loud, unplugged, like an electric guitar, mm-hmm. that is a yeah. wonderful but, sign. Yeah, that's that's a little bit of the problem with the resonance, though. Is it's it's because Too it's so much. loud. Yeah, it's that's what I'm just wondering. Like, is like if because it's made out of Arium that like there's no there's nothing to stop it that like to stop right. the resonance. Like it's just like too much. Which you know is like I said, resonance is normally a good thing. Um, yeah, that to me is like a. I, I probably if I ever really got into like writing rock music, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that for like riffs. I would want to use it for like soloy, yeah. kind of like higher mm-hmm. stuff. Because you know, the more you play like a low string, yeah, it'd gonna, probably get muddy if it just keep if it just doesn't stop res- resonating. It'd probably just be muddy as hell playing a bunch oh. of riffs. But yeah, you, you but it's, it's, it's a really f- good feeling guitar, and I'm I'm such a stickler for like thin necks. That's why I stick to Ibanez's. I can't stand like chunky baseball necks. Mm. But the Aristides actually has a really really fun neck to play on. Uh, what are we at right now? All right, uh, one last question i'm curious about do you have a best slash worst tour experience tim um, like is there one time when you're touring that you're just like yeah like this is this is like the was best thing ever i gotta be honest you know like the, most of my touring experience has not been good um really because really? i've been we've been touring for so long and um you know, at the size that, like, up until recently in the last, since New Levels came out. Mm-hmm. Well, really, since The Most Hated, that's when touring started becoming fun, when when Clay, our drummer Clay, joined the band. Um, yeah. But before that, it was not fun because, you know, you just look yeah. like shit. Um, yeah, have to eat ramen noodles and sit in a shitty bus. Yeah, I mean, like, not even a bus, dude. Like, our first van that we got, um, we spent $1,500 on it. It was a 1994 Ford Econoline, and that was all the money that we had, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, and, um, like, I remember we didn't have a trailer, and we took out the back seats and put our gear there. Like, with the drum set, we didn't take amps. We just Jeez. brought... Um, we brought one Axe FX and went through that. <laughs> Me and Scott shared one Axe FX. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, wow. just plugged in straight, you know, to the to the PAs and just yeah. they did our first three tours like that. And, um, you know, like the van would just constantly break down. And I remember, um, you know, like it being, we were like, we had like got into Canada and fucking like, one of the first times ever going to Canada and it's the dead of winter and our, the van broke down and there's no, there's no fucking uh, heat. And God. Like, like we're just like, we're just like, huddled. The, it's like three in the morning. Like, like we just like was crossing that? a can, like f- from the border, like in Michigan or somewhere. Oh, you know, in like Detroit. Just, yeah, that's right. You're probably broke down in my city. <laughs> I live, and, um, uh, I live in Windsor right across from Detroit, so that was probably right there. Yeah, yeah, somewhere over there and, like, just, like, pulled over on the side of the highway and, like, you know, we don't have service because this is, like, 2014 or 15 before, like, the, you know, like, you you had to, like, tell your provider you were going yeah, out you were of the going country. Somewhere. Yeah, but, like, you can't just go to a different country and not just have service like you can mm-hmm. now. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it was like really shot because we just we just didn't know what the fuck to do, and we're like we're cold, and everything sucks, and we're broke, and fucking shit sucks. We're hungry, <laughs> fucking. Um, yeah. So yeah, we spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, then the next van that we got, we spent twelve thousand dollars on, um, and that van broke down to shit all the fucking time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, eventually, like, we sold that van and then, like, kind of started doing, uh, like, bandwagons and and buses. And it wasn't until the bandwagon and and the buses that it started getting fun because, you know, we we couldn't afford crew back then. Um, And, uh, you know, when you, like, play a show and go sell your own merch and then pack everything up and then Mm -hmm. fucking drive to the next city and just do it all again for, like, just nine months out of the year like that sucks yeah that's a lot um, of work very, i remember like, uh i'm uh friends i don't know if you know the band movements but the drummer of movements watches uh my videos or whatever and they were playing warp tour and i got to go on their bandwagon or whatever bus but those are those are like pretty nice to stay in you know obviously better than a van but like yeah, like much better better than a van. They're a lot bigger and you have like beds and everything. But like do you guys have like a driver? Cuz I remember him saying something like the dr- like he was doing warp tour and the driver per day is like so fucking expensive on top of renting that van. Like you, yeah. you pay for like a driver every day or something oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean at this point in time, you know, our touring ex- experience is much better, you know, like we're we're older now. Um we have a full crew. We've got a, you know, a driver, fucking roadies and techs and like we yeah. don't do anything except get drunk. Um that's now touring is fucking dope. <laughs> because we just yeah, we don't see, fucking be, do anything fun. but get drunk. Um so you know it's it's really cool. Uh some of my best touring experiences have been um on the new levels like world tour that we did where like yeah. it just you know we did just you know america and and then like asia and europe and all that like and um you know probably like the best touring experience would be like on my birthday like we just happened to coincide with like being in japan and so on that tour we had ichika open and then covet was direct support with Yvette Young. And then it was us and it was like my birthday that night and I just That's remember so like sick. like you know being at like the like the height of like my life cuz like you know we had just sold out Tokyo at like you know 1200 cap which is like really big for you know for the us at that time um especially in Japan and yeah, uh, an NA band in Japan that's pretty damn yeah. impressive at any size That's and, cool as hell. And um you know, it was uh, it was just a fucking wild show, and I remember, uh, you know, like halfway through our set, like they came out with a huge cake with my face on it, and um, <laughs> you know, the whole crowd singing "Happy Birthday" and Ichika's up there, like, and fucking Clay, our bass player, just grabbed like Clay's drunk as fuck, um, and he like he picks up Ichika and throws him over his shoulder. <laughs> swinging him around while singing happy birthday it was so wild and then the next day we had an off day and fucking got to go do all the cool things in japan um like the the mori museum which is like if you haven't been definitely go see that it's like one of the most surreal experiences you can have in this life where you go and see this museum full of lights and mirrors and crazy shit while the whole time like the music that's playing is like beautiful piano music from that sounds like it's from like a Miyazaki film um or a Ghibli film and uh you know you just want to cry like it just evokes like so much emotion that you're just standing there in the most beautiful serene place of your life and you just want to cry um and then we went to go see the robot cafe and fucking you know just got trashed yeah, it was Japan sounds awesome. so sick <laughs> um Dude, I want to go to Nintendo World yeah, so bad. Dude. dude, I haven't done that. You know, I've been to Japan five times, like, and I, I still haven't done that. So, you know, maybe well, one Well, I think day. it's a relatively <laughs> new thing. Yeah. The whole Nintendo World thing. But, dude, I definitely want to go Hell to yeah. that soon. But I think yeah. I want to wait till it's in America. But that'll be so <laughs> sick. T- dude, bro, we're going to get the watered down version. You got to go to Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just want, I, I'm going to go to both. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna go to both because I, I, dude, it's I like would Disneyland fuck versus Disney World. 
I would suck yeah, Mario's Italian nice. sausage. Like I love Mario games. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to both. But I want to experience <laughs> it in English first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's fair. Fair enough. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, that's you know, not any particular bad experiences stick out just because I try and suppress those. Um, but most yeah. of most of it before <laughs> the most hated EP was all very bad. Um, yeah. and I was, I did not like my life, um, because I just, I felt like I was trapped, like on tour, just perpetually on tour, not making money and, and not progressing, you know? Yeah. Just being stuck there. So would, yeah. would you say you enjoy the more creative, like writing process of doing the album or the touring side of things? Oh, I, I love being in the studio. Like that is my favorite mm-hmm. thing. Like I, you know, outside of, um. Polyphia, like I just, I just, I, I just be making music. I'm, I'm in the studio all the time, whether it's with, you know, doing like hip hop shit or whatever. Like, yeah, I just love being in the studio. Um, so I prefer that, and I prefer like a live at home. But I do, you know, like right at the as the pandemic hit, um, and tours started getting canceled. Like we were, um you know, right at the end of the album cycle. So we're not like headlining or anything. I think we were supposed to go out with um, Circus Survive and mm-hmm. they like said that the tour was canceled and it was like a fucking snow day, you know, like yeah. mm-hmm. where every, like, you know, adults are all pissed because they can't get to work and whatever, but like you're stoked because you don't have to go to fucking school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that was what it was like. Cause like we were just kind of like over touring and, um, it wasn't our tour, so, like, we weren't upset. We were just like, we don't have to yeah. go? Yay, I'm staying home. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, since then, I I miss tour. Like, I, I would love to do at least one tour a year, you know. It's, it would yeah. be fun to do. But when you over tour, it's it's not a fun thing. I mean, it's too do much of anything. Do you mean, like, anything. a six-month tour, like, a three-month tour, or, like, how long? I mean, like, before, like, you know, the pandemic, we were doing, like, nine months out of the year on tour. Okay, I got you. That's crazy. That is so much work, especially, like, yeah, I feel like because, what, New Levels was 2019, right? 2018, actually. I mean, right at the end of 2018, though, it was kind of stupid. so, like, touring with the same, like, batch of music for so long, I feel like you'd get so worn out on it. Like, it would just lose its, like edge and it just become muscle yeah. memory i feel like so i don't blame you for uh for Dude, getting I, we, worn we, out still, on we still play songs from like 2015 2014 you know i like, can't and, imagine how tired of a, goat you are that's the thing is like you know you you make songs and you don't realize you're gonna have to play that for the rest of your fucking life you yeah. know yeah. you better play something you like or write something you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly the, I like, think like the beach boys uh used to play Every single time they would tour, they would play in like a different key. Just to like <laughs> just mix it up. Ice it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But, yeah, that's a whole yeah, you thing. You should play you know, goat like, like the... drop G. <laughs> like change drop a, a goat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do this of thing course. where fucking like with champagne. Um, I'll play. I have this drop tune part in that song because Nick Johnston like did it in E flat versus E standard. So like okay. sometimes like I'll just put the drop tune pedal on early um and just play the song from the start just in a different key than anyone else. And um it sounds terrible, but it's funny. <laughs> but it's, 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 it spices it up a bit. It's it's one it's one semitone flat than everyone else and you know That's hilarious. <laughs> we're in time. We're we're tight together. It just isn't good. You know <laughs> Well, that's how you know you're having fun when you're intentionally fucking up your own song. <laughs> Dude, we, we do that a lot, actually. Fucking, like, we just, the, what keeps it, you know, when you're on just perpetually on tour, like, you just, number one, you have to stay drunk. And number two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair um, enough. <laughs> write that down, write that down. <laughs> it's, it's like real life trailer park boys, except, like, you know, you don't have to do anything other than be drunk and everyone else just does it for you. Um, but, uh, no, yeah. you, you stay drunk and then, you know, when, you, when you're playing, just just be drunk, you know, and then it's so much more <laughs> That's fun. the only tip for two. <laughs> you'll, you'll find it hard to, like, play guitar drunk. <laughs> Any advice for new, new guitar players, new bands, get drunk. 
<laughs> is it like a skill you get better at, like drunk playing? Um, no, you need to be good before you get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> because you're, it's only going to make you worse. Right. You know? I mean, yeah. there's, there's actually a threshold, you know what I mean, like of getting on a level and then just like it's a very fine line to walk. Um, because if you pass yeah. that threshold, then it goes to shit, right? So yeah, you got to get in your sweet. You got to get in your sweet spot where you're like where you're loose and comfortable, but not like tipsy and falling over and throwing up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know that's 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 the skill is how much to drink. Um. <laughs> so what you, so what you you're, what you're basically saying is to be on tour, you need to be good at your instrument and also good at drinking because new drinkers aren't going to have that nope. skill no, they're not. of getting yeah. in their sweet spot. Oh, yeah. They're going to get fucking trashed. Musicians get practicing on, on both those things. Don't forget. <laughs> practice drinking and practice your instrument. <laughs> yeah, this is coming from a, a very seasoned liver. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we, should we end it on that good advice? Yeah, I think no, that's, a, that's, a that's a good note advice, to end yeah. on is uh, <laughs> stay fucked up on tour. That's the way to do it. <laughs> right. Or just right, throughout soup. life, perpetually. Yeah. Do the outro, please. <laughs> outro, buddy. <laughs> well, Tim, thank you for having yeah, yourself yeah, super on our podcast. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for having, having me. Thank you for Thanks for coming. With us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for being here, man. This was cool. Uh, download on Spotify. Go listen to Polyphia on Spotify as well, and like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, comment, like, subscribe, Polyphia.